Hey guys, what we're going to be doing in this video is a related rates problem. So this is uh, some of our applications for differentiation. Uh, these are pretty cool problems. Uh, I like these a lot because you get to use what you've learned with differentiation and apply it to a sort of real life situation. And it's also good because it reinforces uh, what we learned a couple of sections ago, the uh, something called the chain rule. And we'll see exactly what I mean by that here in a second as we dive into it. But uh, first off, I'm just going to read the problem. So we have a spherical balloon that's being inflated with air at a rate of 800 cubic centimeters per minute. So we want to know how fast is the radius of this balloon increasing at the instant that the radius is A, 30 centimeters, and B, 60 centimeters. So before we even go to try and attack part A or B, what we first want to do is just find some way to relate these rates. That's exactly what the problem says. So what we need to do is we need to find out what our dependence and independence and all that kind of stuff is. So first off, what are we given? Well, we're given a spherical balloon that's being inflated with air. So when this balloon's being inflated with air, what's happening? Well, the volume is changing. So there's our first. That's our dependent is volume. And it's our dependent because there's an independent that affects it. And what's the independent? Well, that's the radius, the other part we're concerned with. And that's because volume and radius are related with this familiar, or really semi-familiar formula. Volume equals four-thirds pi r cubed. So what we want to do is introduce a little bit of calculus into this. What we're doing is we're taking our time derivative of both sides of the equation. So just derivative with respect to time of both sides. And that's because as time goes on, the volume and the radius both change. So there's a dependency, so you have to differentiate accordingly. So on the left side, we just get dv dt. And on the right, well, I'm just going to pull out the 4 3rd pi, since that's just a constant. And now we differentiate r cubed with respect to time. Well, first off, just by power rule, derivative of r cubed is 3r squared. But since, as time elapses, the radius is changing, well, radius is also dependent on time. And here's where the chain rule comes in. That's what I mentioned a little earlier. So we have to write our dr dt right here also and there's the chain rule. So there it is. Um, you can cancel the 3 here in the numerator and the 3 there in the denominator and we get that dv dt is going to equal 4 pi r squared times dr dt. So what this pretty much says is the change in the volume with respect to time is equal to 4 pi r squared times the change in the radius with respect to time. So what the problem asks is first off part A, well that tells us, or it asks us rather, what rate is the radius of the balloon increasing when the radius equals 30 centimeters? Well we can figure that out now because we're given all the unknowns and we can solve for it pretty easily. And here's what I mean. Well, what's dv dt? Well, the problem tells us that the balloon's being inflated with air at a rate of 800 cubic centimeters per minute. So every minute, this balloon, the volume of this balloon, is getting 800 cubic centimeters bigger. So that's what dv dt is. It's the change in volume with respect to time. 800 cubic centimeters a minute. Well, that equals 4 pi r, but r is given, remember, we're concerned with the instant that the radius is 30 centimeters, so r, we just plug in 30 centimeters, that quantity squared, times our only unknown, dr dt, and that's what we're trying to solve for. One equation, one unknown, this should be solvable. We just clean it up a little bit. So, again, we have 800 cubic centimeters per minute is going to equal, okay, 4 pi, 30 centimeters, that quantity squared is going to be 900 
square centimeters and then times dr dt all right so if we want to solve for dr dt we need to multiply or I'm sorry not multiply we need to divide both sides of this equation by 3600 pi centimeters squared and the reason I say that is simply because 4 pi times 900 square centimeters is just 3600 pi square centimeters so if we divide both sides of our equation by that we'll have solved for dr dt which is what we want so what does that mean that means that dr dt equals 800 cubic centimeters per minute divided by 3600 pi square centimeters and just using some of our rules of algebra we can rewrite this fraction as 800 cubic centimeters all over 3600 pi square centimeters times our minute that came from the other denominator below the 800 cubic centimeters so we just combine denominators and now we can cancel some stuff out so after we finish canceling some of our stuff what we're going to be given is that drdt is going to equal this is just going to reduce to 2 over 9 pi centimeters per minute so at the instant that the radius of the balloon has reached 30 centimeters the radius is changing at a rate of 2 over 9 pi centimeters per minute so we have solved for that exactly but remember the problem also asked us at the instant that the radius of the balloon reaches 60 centimeters at what rate is it changing then and that's our part B so let's figure it out and this is pretty easy we just use exactly what we were given before so we know that DVDT is again just 800 cubic centimeters per minute and that equals 4 pi times r squared but remember r is now going to be 60 centimeters so times 60 centimeters that quantity squared times dr dt okay so it's pretty simple at this point you just square some stuff out divide through a little bit and you get your rate so using the exact same process or procedure we used on part A we get that 800 cubic centimeters per minute equals 4 pi times and 60 times 60 is going to be 3600 square centimeters times dr dt and that's going to equal 3600 times 4 is going to be 14,400 square I'm sorry pi square centimeters times dr dt so now we almost have it the last step is just to divide both sides of the equation by the part we don't need to solve for dr dt so with that being said dr dt is going to equal 800 cubic centimeters per minute divided by 14,400 pi square centimeters and that's going to equal again just using some rules of algebra to clean some fractions up 800 cubic centimeters divided by 14,400 pi square centimeters times our minute 
Let me bring this down a little bit, give myself some more room. All right, so what does this tell us? This tells us that our change in radius with respect to time is going to equal 1 over 18 pi. Look what happens here. Centimeters squared brings centimeters cubed to just regular centimeters. So our change in radius with respect to time is going to equal 1 over 18 pi centimeters per minute. So the instant that the radius of the balloon is 60 centimeters, every minute the radius is changing at a rate of 1 over 18 pi centimeters per minute. And what I've done is 800 goes into 800 once, and 800 will go into 14,418 times. So that fraction reduces to 1 over 18. And this is interesting because this is completely logical. I mean, you can verify this pretty easily, and just think about every time you go to blow up a balloon. Well, what do you notice in the very first breath you take? Well, the balloon instantly assumes a, a, a spherical sort of shape. So the radius goes from zero to, I mean, however many inches it is if you measured it. But, I mean, it's always going to be a noticeable amount. But as time progresses and you blow more and more air into the balloon, right before the balloon pops, you'll notice that every breath you put in there, you barely notice any change in the radius. The balloon almost doesn't seem to get any bigger until it finally it bursts. And that's exactly what this math is telling us. But not only is it telling us that logically, but it's not just giving us estimations, but it's giving us exact values. And that's, uh, that's some of the power behind calculus, and it's kind of the reason it's so cool. So, uh, Okay, so final answer here is that change in radius with respect to time, or DRDT, whatever you want to call it, equals 1 over 18 pi centimeters per minute hope this video helps. I think this is all pretty straightforward. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. All right.